Hey, hey! Welcome back to the Let's Play. We're gonna get straight on with things today, folks. Starting off with the comment of the day, Olivia says, Have you considered making a potion farm? Yes, that would be an amazing idea. However, in order to more effectively grow potion ingredients, we're gonna need access to planter boxes. And what that means is trying to get the dryad to spawn in. So... What that means for us is we need to take down the Eye of Cthulhu because that is what you need to do in order to get the Dryad to spawn in. So we're going to start off by going for another boss. No, it's not spawning naturally. We're spawning it in ourselves because, I mean, well, we have the ability to do so. We picked ourselves up a whole bunch of suspicious looking eyes over the last couple of episodes. So how's about we try our hand at the Eye of Cthulhu? Let's do this thing. Thing. All right, we should probably make sure we've got a Finchy boy on us as well. We want to maximize our damage. And uh, yeah, this should be relatively straightforward. In my experience, if you can take down King Slime, you can usually take down the Eye of Cthulhu as well. I'm not doing too bad so far. However, we do need to be making sure that we're still within range of our little regenerative campfires. So, yeah. Alright, 3,900 health. Things are looking good so far. And while we do this, my friends, I do, of course, want to say an enormous thank you for all of your lovely support throughout this series so far. I really appreciate all the support in the form of the likes, comments, and subscriptions lately, my friends. Of course, if you want to continue supporting this series, dropping a like on these videos is by far the easiest way to show your support. Hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. If you do want to go on further with your support, Though, you can head on over to fightergpcom slash PC to check out my range of Apex gaming PCs. If you're more in the market for some Terraria merch though, you can head on over to Terraria.shop and use code Python for a whopping 15% off. Here I am trying to do my normal intro and uh, this guy's getting a little bit angsty. Ah, jeez. Alright, 1100 health though, my friends. We're not doing too bad. It's usually in the last 500 or so health. That's when things start getting really bad. So here we are, 800, 750. Oh, snap. As long as we stay on this platform, we might be kind of okay. Oh, no, we're getting hurt by regular eyes here. Oh, jeez. 300 health. <laughs> this is getting too much, man. Oh, my God. 100 health. Uh, I mean, oh, boy. Wow, we actually just did that. Excellent. You know what I'm feeling like we should do right now? Let's do it again. <laughs> Let's see if we can't take this guy down a second time. Let's try and get this guy back over to our base area. Because once again, our campfires are here. They're not all across the world. Not just yet anyway. So sticking nearby a base is a good way to go. Now needless to say, aside from having the Dryad be able to spawn in, there are other benefits to taking down the Eye of Cthulhu nice and quick. Like we can get ourselves Demonite slash Crimtain ore. So we can make ourselves a nice bow. Maybe some nice upgraded tools. Upgraded tools means that we'll be able to build a lot easier and a lot more effective. Effectively, so yeah, very very good stuff getting nice tools early on is definitely a good thing indeed So as much as some of you guys may be worried about me, you know quickening up the pace of the series believe me I'm really not all right the final thousand health or so just gotta try to not get hit a whole bunch. And actually, I completely forgot I have access to triple jump. So maybe I should do myself a favor and just like jump a bit more. <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter all that much though, because ladies and gentlemen, we've just done it. Easy, easy. When you've been playing the game as long as I have and you've done as many playthroughs as I have, master mode legitimately feels like normal mode. <laughs> I'm not trying to sound big-headed. I'm sure you guys have also had that kind of feeling whenever you've played this game a whole bunch. All right, so check it out. We actually got ourselves a trophy from that, which I think is pretty awesome. We got ourselves a master mode drop as well. We might as well grab it out and put it on. We got a little eyeball following us. And here we are with a whole bunch of additional stuff. So we have the ability to make ourselves a custom crimson if we so wish. Got ourselves a bunch of crimtain. And of course, the beauty that is the shield of Cthulhu. Yeah. 
there. Another lovely movement accessory. I mean, what is better than being able to dash? Eh? We're not doing bad, are we, eh? <laughs> so, what's our cash supply looking like? 51 gold coins. <laughs> That's not bad, is it? All right, let's get to work on some Crimtain upgrades. We have a whopping 42 bars. And with that, we have access to a whole new set of gear. We've got ourselves the Flesh Catcher, an upgraded fishing rod. That's very good. The Tendon Bow, 23 damage versus 15. I mean, why? Oh... Okay, I am very much looking forward to coming across the shimmer because that is just awful. Like, what is that? I mean, it literally is awful. Look at it. It's got the awful prefix, but still, wow, that's just poor. We've got access to a nice axe now. I mean, look at it. It's a whopping 19 damage increase. Nope, make that 21 damage increase now. That's quite a lot, isn't it? And yeah, the rest of the bars are pretty much going to save up for later down the line. I say that I'm going to decraft this, but actually, I don't really feel too bad about just going ahead and selling it instead. Because we can get some cash, we can put it away, we can save it up for some good stuff. Probably don't need the reinforced fishing pole anymore, so we're going to go ahead and sell that bear boy. So yeah, there we are. Nicely upgraded axe, nicely upgraded bow, and a nicely upgraded fishing pole. Not a bad start to the episode, eh, folks? So then, I was mentioning we need the dryer to move in, and in order to get more NPCs to move in, we're gonna have to do a little bit more building. Now, the thing is, I think what might be a good idea right now is if we make ourselves like a nice, simple NPC hotel setup, just so we could get as many NPCs to spawn in as humanly possible, as early on as possible as well. And then we start distributing all of the NPCs across all of the eventual builds that we're going to have in this world. So what I'm thinking we do is we grab ourselves a whole bunch of basic building resources, we get the NPC hotel built, and then we can start on some epic builds. Because honestly, it's not just planter boxes you can buy from the dryad. You could buy a whole bunch of leaf walls, for example. That's a pretty nice way to go. So what do we have access to in plentiful amounts? Uh, well, the fact of the matter is this. Not a lot. <laughs> uh, right, you know what? We've got hay blocks. And we have the ability to get more hay blocks just by, you know, grabbing out the sickle, doing a little bit of this. So, wood and thatch. I mean, that'd look pretty cool. Here I am saying I'm going to make myself a nice basic NPC hotel build when actually I'm thinking about using multiple types of resources for it. I can't help it. I'm a builder at heart. I love building in this game. And you know what? In the last couple of episodes, we gained access to the living wood one. So how about a living wood sort of structure with a thatch slash hay roof? That could look pretty cool, right? Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get some sort of infrastructure going on here. We're going for maximum efficiency for this NPC hotel, okay? So, yeah, let's see what we can come up with. So as long as each of the houses has at least 35 air blocks within them, they should wind up being valid NPC houses. So... Let's see if we can get that going. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily move the living loom over here. Again, I'm trying to make a basic NPC hotel build, but here I am doing a whole bunch of building related stuff to make it look a little bit more than just a crummy box hotel kind of dealio. Oh well, there's worse things to cry about in the world, isn't there my friends? So uh, here we go in terms of sort of the main structure of this little NPC hotel. Ah, crumbs. I've actually run out of wood. <laughs> well, now that kind of sucks, doesn't it? But the good news is we don't actually need a great deal more. I just need to sort of finish off the structure and then we get the little thatch roof on it. And then from there, we could start getting ourselves some background walls and a whole bunch of other stuff that we need. It's very possible that we might wind up repurposing the NPC hotel for something else later down the line. Only, you know, once we have the NPCs spread out all across the world, the little hotel here will probably lose its purpose. So maybe we should think about what this build could become in future. Maybe like a little collection place. Maybe we can store all of our master mode drops in there for example. You know, something like that. So here we are, chopping a bunch more wood. What are we up to? 400? Yeah, that should be more 
than enough to be getting on with my friends. Uh, right, let's go home and get this thing going again. Only I realized I didn't actually just need wood for the infrastructure. I needed wood for the background walls as well. Only look, this requires wood. Even though this is a leaf, it requires wood. <laughs> Time to secure this hotel with just a few doors. And then we're gonna go at it with a few bits of lighting. Some tables and chairs, just so they've got some furniture to sit on and do stuff with. Ooh, a dresser. That could be quite a nice idea. With the dresser, we can use it for storing a bunch of vanity items. Haha, <laughs> that's a pretty cool idea, huh? Turns out we have access to hay walls. I am very interested to see how these look alongside some of these other wooden type background walls. I think they'll work quite well together, but we'll see for sure in just a minute. All right, let's see how these look. Uh, do you know what? I actually kind of like them. And of course, as we continue to fill up these NPC houses, NPCs should start spawning in when the next daytime rolls around, that is. Unfortunately, I think it's only just become nighttime, so we might be waiting a little bit of time before we get NPCs to spawn in, but uh, never mind. I guess we'll get there eventually, eh, folks? What we should probably do is ensure that these are actually suitable. Yeah, looks like it, doesn't it, folks? All nine of them. Wait, that one's missing a table. Oh yeah, of course. As much as there's a living wood loom there, there isn't a crafting table of any kind. So there we are. We got there in the finish, didn't we? Good grief. There is a small army out here. Hang on a minute. We need to get rid of this invasion. Yeah, get out of here, all of y'all. So since we seem to be going for a kind of a semi-barn aesthetic, why don't we go full barn? How's about we add a nice hay roof to this thing? I'm thinking like a, a very great gradual semicircle kind of deal here. Here we are, a roof like this. This is what I was after. So yeah, this is an NPC hotel which has actually somehow become a barn. <laughs> oh dude, I love this. Right, so what do we think we should have as the background wall up here? Maybe we just go at it with the straw slash thatch slash whatever the devil this stuff is first. Maybe we can add some more stuff to it later. Although I don't know, I kind of like the proper attic feel that this is giving right now. So, yeah? How about it? I quite like this. And better still, we could probably, if we really want to, we could probably squeeze in another NPC space up here. So here we go. We've got a workbench. Have ourselves a couple of seats up there as well. We're going to pretty much center this thing because I think what we could use this attic for is a rudimentary storage area. You know, I think that could be a really cool idea. We don't have a proper storage area just yet. How about an attic one? We've got plenty of space here, so why not? Could probably get away with a few other generic lighting items. Maybe a couple of candles, a candelabra here and there. You know, something to give this little hotel a little bit more character. The question is, yeah, we're going to be trying to make a storage area, but are we going to have enough iron to create all of the chests? I guess we'll find that out once we take down this invasion. The good news is, regarding hostile mob spawns, is when we do have the NPCs all spawned in and living here in perfect harmony, then, uh, yeah, we should have basically negated all hostile mob spawns. Ah, uh, good news, my friends. Lots and lots and lots of iron on the go. Haha, <laughs> you love to see it. All right, let's see how many chests we can squeeze in this little top hovel area. Oh. Turns out we've run out of wood again. See, the thing is, I don't want to get rid of the trees around here because they've all got torches on them and they look mighty dang fine, actually. So it looks like we're going to have to go slightly more afield to try and get ourselves a bunch of woodsy doodles, eh? Here we go, in fact. Oh, these are nice large trees as well. Yeah. Oh, turns out we actually had a couple of living looms spare. That's very nice. Nice. <laughs> okay, very good. Wait, what is this? Wonder frosting? Uh, is that an upgrade? Uh, looks like it shoots a little frost. 30% crit chance on the wonder sparking? 
27% on here, but that's only because this one's got a little modifier to it. All right, sod it. Let's do it. Nimble. All right, we've got more speed with it. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see what we can do. Five chests on either side. I'd say that's a pretty good start. We can even squeeze in a couple more, perhaps, I think. And then we'll call this little place complete. And then we start playing the waiting game, eh? So here we are. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. Very nice. So we've got a grand total of 12 storage chests in this place. That's not bad, is it? We could probably squeeze in a few more just sort of dotted around this hotel as well. So let's have one down there, for example. Maybe one down there. Maybe we could also, I don't know, squeeze in some other bits of furniture. That would be quite a nice way to go, I think. you got to be kidding me. The traveling merchant is on the Sky Island way over there. Of course. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Why spawn up there? You need to go back to business school, Shipton. The vast majority of folks are down here at the main base area, and yet you think it's a good idea to spawn up there? I mean, I mean, what kind of custom are you really going to get up there? This guy is going to, what, throw fish at you? And then the slime? What the heck is that guy going to do for the traveling merchant, eh? No. All right. What other bits of furniture do we have to work with? Solidify. We've not placed one of those just yet. Angel statue. Just because, I mean, why not? The heavy workbench. Ah, yes. That is going to be very, very useful, isn't it? All right. Let's go place these bad boys down. And then I think I'd be pretty happy in calling this place complete. Oh, would you look at that? There's the dryad. We got her, folks. We got it. All right, let's make sure. Oh, nah. I bet it's the chest that's making it non-valid. Usually winds up being the case. And there it is. It is the case. Ah. All right, what about now? Still suitable. Okay, very good. Still suitable. Still suitable. Not valid. Almost certainly because of too many chests. So I guess we're going to have to get rid of one or two. Still valid. Yep. Still valid. And still valid. Okay, right. We should be Okay, so then my friends the whole reason we made this NPC hotel was for these bad boys Very very good for growing potion ingredients on and well, I mean, I don't know Do we actually have like every single potion ingredient seed already? I don't think we've been doing too bad with that because we've been grabbing herbs all over the place. Moon glow, death weed, all that kind of stuff. So in here, what have we got? There's the moon glow. There's the death weed, blinky plant, fire blossom. Uh, what else have we got? Water leaf, shiver thorn, and daybloom. That's all seven. We've already got all seven kinds of potion ingredients that you can grow. Oh, <laughs> that is is absolutely amazing. So that means in a future episode, we can make ourselves a whopping great greenhouse build of some description. We can grow all of the potion ingredients here. That's going to be so cool. I always say the earlier you can get yourself a potion ingredients growing area, the better things are going to be for you in the future of your playthrough. There's nothing worse than not having potion ingredients to make potions with come late hard mode. Like, you just don't want that to ever be the case because that just sucks. All right, check it out. The demolitionist is now here. I wonder if we could potentially get some more NPCs. We've got, what, the merchant, the guide. We've got the demolitionist, dryad the nurse, uh, we could probably get the little guy to come down here actually as well. So let's get you up here. And we've still got a whole bunch of spaces even still. Here's the thing. If we were to pop into the crimson and break ourselves one of the crimson hearts, we should be guaranteed a gun. And by having a gun on us, we'll be able to get the arms dealer to move in. And I think that would be a very good idea. So here we are. We've got ourselves a bunch of bombs. All we have to do is get to the crimson. Ideally without dying. Although what we should actually do is probably go see the traveling merchant. I'd very much like to check out what he's selling. I just hope that we can get there in time before he despawns. The painter has arrived. Yeah. Every Terraria builder's best friend. All right, here we are. Still early afternoon in game here. What have you got for me, buddy? Uh, oh, DPS meter. Okay, this was worth the journey then. Very good. Another informational accessory for our arsenal of 
well, information and accessories. <laughs> the Extendo Grip, that's going to be quite nice to have as well. We can make a bit of a start and trying to get the Architect Gizmo Pack or whatever it's called. So yeah, very, very good. I think we're just about good to go for our goal of trying to get the Arm Stealer. Ah, the Zoologist is here as well. If we really wanted to, we could grab ourselves our first ever whip of the series. Uh, provided that she's selling it and we've got the requirements in order for her to sell it. All right, here we are. All we got to do is get down into this place, ideally without dying. We're going to get ourselves a bunch of sticky bombs in preparation for this. So here we go. Time to do a little bit of blowy uppy. Probably need to do another one even still. Only we can't actually mine the stone, you know, in the normal way with the pickaxe just yet. So here we go. What have we got? We've got the Undertaker and we've got ourselves also the Crimson Heart. Not too bad. We've got our first light pet of the series. So with the Undertaker in our inventory, we should be able to get the arms dealer to move in. So yeah, once again, just a case of playing the waiting game. Wow, that really didn't take very long. In fact, at all. <laughs> Hey there, Tyrone! And there it is, the almighty mini shark. You gotta love this bad boy, like seriously. After all of the years this item has been a thing in this game, it's always been a very, very good weapon to have early game. So, yeah, we're not that far away from being able to purchase it, but it goes without saying, we could get cheaper prices if these guys were all scattered along the world and they had maximum happiness, but... Ah, well, I think we're still going to buy the mini shark just because why not? When the time comes, that is. So then, lots of NPCs on our world. A lovely new NPC hotel with a nice little storage attic room. I don't think we've done too bad today, folks. A nicely rounded episode. We've done ourselves a bunch of building. We've taken down another boss. I'm feeling pretty accomplished today. So ladies and gentlemen, that is going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have enjoyed today's episode, and of course you're excited to see more, do be sure to head down beneath the video and spend a second to drop a like if you haven't already. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to ding that bell if you don't want to miss out on my future content. But for now, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for all of your lovely support. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.